This week, we're closing out the first half of games released on the Wonderswan in 1999 with a port of Nichibutsu's hit October 1980 arcade game, Crazy Climber. It was released on July 29, 1999 and developed and published by Nichibutsu. Nichibutsu is the brand name under which Nihon Bussan, a Japanese video game publisher and electronics company, operated. Early on they were known for their arcade games such as Crazy Climber and the shooter Moon Cresta, but like much of the industry they started pivoting towards home console development around 1983. Nichibutsu can also be considered the inventor of the strip mahjong subgenre, as the 1983 arcade game Jango Night was apparently the first to come to market. This caused huge arguments between adult arcade game producers and the arcade operators, and they were pushed out of the regular arcade market and formed their own adult arcade industry association. Because of this, Nichibutsu released their last family-friendly arcade title in 1989 and went all into the adult arcade industry, releasing Strip Mahjong and Hanafuda arcade games until 1996. Nichibutsu's one standout console hit was the F1 Circus series of simulation-style F1 racing games, which started in 1990 and ended in 1997. In 1992 and 93, Nichibutsu sponsored Team Lotus, and their logo appeared on the Lotus 107 and 107B F1 cars. It also happens that Lotus vehicles were unusually powerful in the 1992 version of F1 Circus, but I'm sure that was just a coincidence. Crazy Climber is a game where you play a stuntman who climbs up 195 story skyscrapers by grabbing onto the ledges of windows, all while trying to avoid obstacles thrown in your path. Those obstacles can be as mundane as a window opening and closing, annoying like birds who fly by and poop on your head, or threatening like falling signs, flower pots, or even King Kong hanging out on the side of the building. To add insult to injury, there is the time limit you need to worry about, which means taking your time to dodge out of the way of obstacles means you need to be at the top of your game to make it up in time. Due to its early release, Crazy Climber also manages to be the first video game ever to be about climbing, beating Nintendo's Donkey Kong to the market by almost 9 months. Another thing that made Crazy Climber distinct at the time was that it was the first non-shooter game to use two joysticks and no buttons as its control scheme in the arcade. When the Famicom version was released in 1986, the game came bundled with joysticks you could snap onto the D-pads of both controllers, and you would hold one controller in each hand in the portrait orientation, letting you play with controls similar to what you had in the arcade. So naturally, the Wonderswan game not only makes you hold the system in portrait orientation, but it also benefits from the layout of the X and Y directional buttons, which allows you to play the game with pretty much unchanged controls. However, the Wonderswan version is a pretty bare-bones port. It features an arcade mode which mimics the layout of the original four arcade levels, and a Wonderswan mode with a different set of levels and alternate graphics. Most of the obstacles that are thrown or dropped on you are really hard to see in grayscale, and as such I really wouldn't recommend playing it. If you're going to play Crazy Climber at all, I would encourage you to seek out the Famicom version, as it's widely regarded as the definitive version of the game. The Famicom version has an array of diverse looking stages and platforming sections, and if you're going to play a punishing arcade game, you might as well play the version where you can see the obstacles coming at you. 